simple foods like dark leafy greens and mean protein like fish and beans not processed foods like Nabisco time to cook with Welcome back to Cooking for Your Kids with Dr. Crisco. These days you've probably heard a lot about how carbohydrates are bad for you. Over the next few segments I'm going to specifically discuss which type of carbohydrates are bad and why. But first, let's take a look at how carbohydrate intake amongst Americans has changed over time. In 1980, in an effort to combat heart disease, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services issued its first dietary guidelines for Americans with the message to reduce fat intake and increase carbohydrate intake. At the time of those guidelines in 1980, the average American diet consisted of 37% fat and 44% carbohydrate, and the prevalence of diabetes was 6 million. After those guidelines had time to take an effect, by 1992 we had reduced our fat intake by 3% down to 34% and increased carbohydrate up to 49% and diabetes prevalence crept up to 7 million. These guidelines were further reinforced by the food pyramid which recommended that grains make up the majority of our diet. By 2000 these trends continued and fat reduced to 33% and carbohydrate made up 50% of our diet. And by that time, diabetes had ballooned to 12 million. And by 2010, diabetes is now up to 20 million. It just so happens that carbohydrates increase blood sugar levels much more significantly than either fat or protein. Is it possible then that the increase in carbohydrates that we've seen over the past three decades is directly responsible for the increased prevalence of diabetes, a disease state that is defined by pathologically elevated blood sugar levels. If that's the case, do I blame all carbohydrates? No. Carbohydrates like beans and non-starchy vegetables are good for you and should be given liberally to your kids. What I do implicate are carbohydrates that have a proportionally larger effect on raising blood sugar levels. Examples of these type of carbohydrates are found in processed foods with added sugars or grains that have had the fiber stripped from them and are rapidly absorbed. These types of carbohydrates have a high glycemic index and they're not good for you. To help you understand what the glycemic index is, let me give you a relatable example. You may not feel it when your blood sugar levels rise after a meal. However, I'll bet you feel the effects of drinking two or three drinks of hard liquor or in my case, one can of beer. And then I'll bet you really feel those effects if you've had that same volume of alcohol on an empty stomach. What you've experienced has been demonstrated in a study of subjects who drank a moderate amount of alcohol in the morning after an overnight fast or the same amount of alcohol after a breakfast. In this study, subjects who drank alcohol on an empty stomach had much higher peak blood alcohol concentration levels and that alcohol hung around for a much longer time than subjects who had alcohol after breakfast. In the fasting state, we saw a much greater area under the curve than that in the fed state. In this example, alcohol on an empty stomach was much more rapidly absorbed, leading to higher peak levels which hung around longer, and this resulted in the subjects feeling more intoxicated. This is the concept of the glycemic index. According to the glycemic index, foods made up of the exact same quantity of carbohydrates may have vastly different physiologic effects based on how rapidly those carbohydrates are absorbed. For example, the carbohydrates in a typical slice of bread are rapidly absorbed, giving a glucose response curve like this, whereas carbohydrates in beans absorb much more slowly, giving a glucose response curve like this. In the bread example, glucose floats around the bloodstream to a much greater extent than in the bean example. As a category, grains such as breads, pastas, rice, and cereal have the highest glycemic indices of all carbohydrates. However, grains eaten in the whole form, such as the whole oat grain, which includes the outer bran, which is the fiber portion of the grain, 
have lower glycemic indices than grains that have been highly processed. Let me give you an example of an alternative to the typical cold American breakfast cereal, which is the pseudo-grain quinoa, which has a very low glycemic index and can be quite tasty. Let's cook with some quinoa. Go ahead and rinse your quinoa first. I'm going to boil the quinoa for about 10 to 15 minutes. After the quinoa has been cooked and the liquid has been absorbed, add 3 tablespoons of unsweetened applesauce, 3 tablespoons of peanut butter, and 1 chopped banana. Stir to combine. You can add some peanuts on top as well. Thanks again for tuning in to Cooking for Your Kids with Dr. Chris Co. To see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel over here. And to read more about the glycemic index, check out my blog over here.